Okay, we'll set it to scroll because we want it to scroll naturally with the web page and we'll set it to zero and zero for the X and Y axis. Okay, we're going to start putting in the border styles now. So we'll start off with the border color and we'll type in border dash color, colon, pound for the hexadecimal colors and we'll type in D8, D9, DA and I'll give it a light gray color. And we'll also put in a border width and we'll type in border dash width colon and we'll set that to one pixel and put a semicolon on the end. Now all of these border styles can be concatenated if you want to put them all into one long string. Um, but I thought I'd separate them so you'd know all of the different styles that you can use. So border dash style colon, we'll set that to solid and it will be a solid one pixel gray line and a semicolon on the end. Okay, so I'm now going to preview that in Firefox and as you can see it's mostly in place now. We've got the border set in but it needs to join up to the top of the box and the bottom of the box as well. So we'll have to write a few styles to change that and to also add the padding to the left and right of the paragraph to make it fit better. Okay, don't worry because we're almost finished adding our styles and soon we'll have a text box which expands and looks great. Now I want to set a text color which ever so slightly contrasts the um, box, the silver box that we've got at the top. So I'm going to type in color colon and pound for hexadecimal 444444 and it will give it a nice dark grey color to the text and it kind of blends in well with that box. Now I'm also going to adjust the font size so I'm going to type in font dash size remember we're adjusting the paragraph and colon and we're going to set it to 11 pixels and put a semicolon on the end and we're also going to adjust the line height so I'm going to type in line dash height colon and I'm going to set that to 1.3 m's and put a semicolon on the end too. Okay, now it's time to close the gap between the top of the paragraph and the box image and as well as the bottom. So I'm going to take all the default margins out. So I'm going to type in margin colon and zero and put a semicolon on the end. And as you see, after I've refreshed, it closes the gap between them. So we'll now have a look in uh, Firefox to see what that looks like. And as you can see, the gap's been closed now. All we really need to do is add a bit of padding to the left and to the right. Okay, so let's add that padding now. We'll go padding colon and we'll set the top to 15 pixels. So it'll push away from the box. We'll set the left and right to 14 pixels and we'll set the bottom to zero pixels because we've already got a little bit of padding set up for that. Okay, so we'll also specify our width and we'll put in width colon 220 pixels and semicolon on the end. Okay, now I've just clicked to refresh and as you can see there's padding on the left and the right. It's also pushing away from the top of the box by 15 pixels. So it looks pretty good so far. Okay, so let's preview that in Firefox again. Okay, so I think that's looking really good now. Um, okay, it's just one thing. I want to push it away from the left and right by 15 pixels, so I'm going to go in and change that now. Fantastic. Okay, let's show you what you can do with these web text boxes now. Um, what we'll do is we'll close off this particular one so we know exactly where it finishes. So I'm just going to close it off with a simple line of code. Now what you can do is copy all of the code that we just typed in and you can paste it below but what we'll do is we're going to type it manually because I want to, you to see what happens with the background images so I'm going to type in div class and box and um, I'm going to press refresh and you're going to see that it's just going to appear with the bottom image that we specified as the background image in the CSS styles there you go. So every time you type in div class box, it's going to appear with that background image. And um, if you remember, we set the uh, background image for the top of the box for the H3 title tag. So if we now type in H3 and then close that off, we don't actually have to put any text in the middle to make that image appear. So if I press refresh now, you'll see the top of the box appears as well. So now we've just created our box. So if we put any paragraph in, which has got the border specified to it, 
it's just going to keep expanding and auto expanding all the way down as much text as we put in as many links as we can put in as well so if I just quickly type in a paragraph and so I'll open a paragraph tag and I'll close it because it's easier to just close it and then type the text in the middle okay so I'm going to type this is the text for the second box yay and there you have it so I hope you really enjoyed this Dreamweaver tutorial on expanding web text boxes I've had a lot of requests to do this so hopefully you'll stop messaging me now to uh, show you how to make the tutorial and uh, don't forget to download the tutorial file so you can practice it yourself okay I'll see you next time